Today, I would like to take you on a little problem-solving journey. And this journey is going to take us into the land of long division of polynomial functions. So come along. Let's look at the function x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5x minus 6, which is being then divided by x minus 2. First thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to rewrite it in long division form. Take a look. Bam. So what we do is we take this term that's to the left-hand side of the division symbol, and we plug it in on the outside of your long division symbol. And therefore, this term will go then on the inside of that long division symbol. So now how do we do this? So let's look at your divisor. What you're going to do is you're going to locate the term with the highest power of x in it. It turns out to be that there's only one term with x in it anyway, so it's basically this 1x term, right? And what you're going to do is you're going to take this 1x term and you're, and you're going to divide it on into now the highest term or the term with the highest power of x in your dividend, okay? So we can do that math on out on the left-hand side. So it's going to be 3. No, not 3. What? Well, there's a 3, but it's cubed. x cubed <laughs> divided by x. Oh, boy. This isn't going to go well. It's going to be x squared, right? x squared. Easy enough. Okay, so what you're going to do, this is your quotient. Okay, that's your quotient. So you're going to take that term x squared, and you're going to write it above now the long division symbol. I don't care where you put it. You can put it here. You can put it here. You can put it here. It doesn't really make a difference. Okay. Then what you're going to do is now you're going to set up your uh, math underneath your dividend. Okay. So subtraction symbol and parentheses. You're going to take now this quotient term and you're going to distribute it, aka multiply it, into each of the terms of your divisor. So when you take x squared and multiply it by x, it's going to come out to be x cubed. Now, if you did this right, it should match this. And then you're going to take your x squared and multiply it by the negative 2, which will come out to be negative 2x squared. Now, this doesn't have to match when you do this. It doesn't have to match anything. And if it does, it's totally coincidental. Okay. Now, there's no terms out here. Uh, so what you can do is you can simply plug in 0, right? I mean, there's no more terms here. I mean, x also, you can think about x minus 2 is the same thing as saying x minus 2 plus 0 plus 0, right? So if you took the x squared and you distributed it into those two zeros, you'd have two extra zeros there, okay? You can think about it a whole bunch of ways. Um, but anyway, you think about it there, it's going to work out to be the same. What you're going to do now, you're going to take this negative symbol, basically, and you're going to distribute it to every term inside of those parentheses, okay? So keep in mind that there's only going to be one term that's going to change into a positive, okay? And it's the one with the negative symbol. So turn that into a positive, and then all the other terms you're going to make negative, Okay, including the leading term. Now, all you have to do is do the math. So when you add these two together, they just cancel, right? And then you add these two together, it's basically a subtraction, right? So that's going to be a negative x squared. And then these are just zero, so you just basically bring those terms on down, right? So that's going to be 5x minus now 6. This is now your new divisor, no, dividend. Oh my goodness. They couldn't come up with better words, right? Dividend, divisor, quotient. I mean, come on. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? So now this is your new dividend, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to now go back to your divisor. You're going to look at that highest, uh, that term with the highest power of x, and you're going to take that and divide it into now the term with the highest power of x in your dividend. Let's do the work on out on the left hand side. It's going to be negative x squared all divided by that x. That works out to be just negative x, right? So we're going to take this now, and this is now the next term in our quotient. Okay, that negative symbol will basically mean now a subtraction, so minus x. Cool. Then what you're going to do is same process. Put your negative symbol down or a minus sign in your parentheses. Take this term in the quotient, this thing, including the negative sign, and now multiply it into each term there in your divisor. Okay? So negative x multiplied now by that x, let me get rid of that line down there, it's distracting, is going to now be a negative x squared. If you did this right, this should match that. Okay? Then negative x multiplied by negative 2 is going to be now a positive 2x. Okay? And there's nothing over here anymore, so you're just going to put a 0, right? There's no other term. Now, distribute. Take that negative symbol, and now distribute it into each of the terms inside of that parentheses. Okay? So we're going to turn this negative x squared into a positive, right? We love when we do that. Okay, turn the negatives into the positive. When life gives you lemons, make fruit punch. 
So, ah, I got you with that one, right? You were, you were gonna, you were thinking I was gonna say lemonade, but no, just make fruit punch. Anyway, those cancel, and uh, then what we're gonna do is add these two together. Okay, it's basically a subtraction though, right? Because one's positive, one's negative. So that's gonna be a positive now three x, and then that's just gonna be minus six. Cool. Now guess what? This is your new dividend. Take that highest term in the x, uh, excuse me, in your divisor, just the x and then divide it into now the term with the highest x power here in your dividend, which is 3x. Do the math on over on the uh, uh, left-hand side. So you can definitely see, hopefully you're starting to see the patterns. And that looks like a y, but that's really an x. When you do this, it's just gonna be three, right? It's a positive three, by the way. So take that and now plug it in, positive three. So it becomes basically a plus symbol. Great, so now when you have this, all you gotta do is distribute, right? Into each term there. So when you take positive three, multiply it by x, you get a, well, oh, almost forgot my step, right? You gotta write the negative symbol and your parentheses. So then when you do that first distribution, it's going to be a positive three x. If you did it right, guess what? It should match this. And a positive three multiplied by negative two. So it's gonna be a negative six. Now distribute, right, that negative, okay? Distribute to each term. So the first one's gonna become negative. And the second one, you're gonna turn that lemon into fruit punch. And then when you add these all together, they just, I don't know why I changed the color and that cancels too, so it's just zero, right? So there is no remainder here, okay? It goes in beautifully, fits perfectly. So this now is your quotient, and this is indeed now the answer. And I know that looks weird, right? It's all like X's and it's like, I can divide 12 by three, you know, then I get a number, right? Four, but this just looks strange. I agree with you. It definitely does look strange. And, to make it a little less strange, you can kind of see if this is correct by doing a little simple check. So take this term, right, which is known as your dividend. So it's x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5x minus 6. Divide it by your divisor, x minus 2, and then that should equal now your quotient, okay? Whoever came up with these terms deserves a medal, a medal. Okay, and now to check yourself, all you have to do is come up with some x value, all right? You're gonna make it up, whatever you want. Have it be x, I don't know, to equaling zero. Have it be one or 14 million, it doesn't really matter, all right? Sometimes I like to shy away from zero and one because sometimes that might make it work out when it really shouldn't have um, because when you have zero, a lot of the terms just kind of cancel. So it might you might be wrong, but it might work out to be lucky that you'll get a check that works. Um, in this case, because I'm gonna be a little lazy, I'm gonna use zero. But maybe when you do it, maybe choose a value like either one or two, something like that, all right? Don't choose, actually, excuse me, do not choose two. The reason being is because if you chose two here, two minus two is gonna be zero, that whole baby is going to zero. Denominator is going to zero. What does that mean, ladies and gentlemen, hmm? Right, it's undefined. You can't divide by zero, so don't choose two. Okay, now plug in zero. So zero cubed minus three times zero squared plus five times zero minus six, all then divided by zero minus two. That has to equal now zero squared minus zero plus three. All right, so that goes bye-bye, that goes bye-bye, that goes bye-bye. I'm left with negative six over basically negative two. And that's gonna be equal to now a positive three is this true? Negative over negative is positive. Six over two is gonna be three. And is three equal to three? No, right? It's not equal to three. Three is not equal to three. No, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. It, of course it's equal, right? I heard you, I, I can hear you. I know you're screaming at the computer right now. What the fuck are you talking about? It's a, of course it's equal. I know I'm just playing with you, messing with you. All right, get have fun sometimes. My dog's even yelling at me. What are you gonna do? Guys, thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it, all right? If you can, like, subscribe. Tell some of your classmates. We'd love to help more people. All right, we would be here without you. We appreciate all of your support. And by the way, if you're taking anything other than mathematics, like physics or chemistry, and we got a whole lot of other stuff coming, we got thousands of videos out there for you, okay? We teach the concepts through the problems. You're going to see specific problems. Are you going to see theory on your test? Probably not, right? Are you going to see specific problems? Yes. That's what we specialize in. Okay, specific problems. You want to do as much practice and you have tons of guidance, thousands 
of examples of guided solutions. Check us out. Take care.